Welcome to the Tigerium Hanger. This is Mike and welcome to the 19,000 subscriber special. I want to say thank you to everybody that made this happen. Now you made this happen, not me, because of all of the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the engagement, and all the stuff that's going on that kind of pushes the channel out to other people, for other people to check out the content, such as Sunday News, such as all the Masterpiece Transformers reviews, the Legends Transformers reviews, and then of course there's Retro Wednesday, which is 80 different vintage toy lines I'm working on, plus whatever new comes out that's associated with vintage toy lines. And then of course Friday, we have the Masterpiece Transformer videos and all kinds of other stuff in between. We've got Eternia coming in, we'll be doing that video pretty soon. And so, so much fun going on, Motu, pretty much anything 80s is getting covered here. Now, this video is to give back to you and I want to say thanks to everyone, your collections. Uh, also, thanks for submitting these, this amazing displays, amazing collections, amazing pictures, whole lot of fun looking at these. I steal some ideas. Maybe you will too. Really hope everybody enjoys this, but let's get and take a look at these wonderful collections and I'll have a spot for the 20,000 subscriber special so you can submit those. I'll have a link down below for that pretty soon, but let's look at these coming up. All right, so we're going to start out with Alpha Pack and I want to say before we get into looking at these collections that Inevitably, somebody always says, hey, Mike, you missed my pictures. Well, I took every picture that was in there in the link below, and so submit them to the Facebook in that link, or else I'm just not going to find them. It's, and I really can't do the video anymore. I can't pull the video off Facebook anymore. It just doesn't work. So pictures, good pictures, and that's how we do it. Now, getting into this, this is the Alpha Pack, uh, and he's got some really cool stuff going on. I do like his elevation he's going on. So you've got the... Bigger stuff in the back and some smaller stuff in the front. But you also have some big stuff in the front, too. Got some uh, acrylic risers looking really good. And, and it works well. It works really well. And then we're moving on to the next one here. So there's a mixture of stuff. I was trying to group like kinds. I just kind of gave up on that. So we're just going to see all kinds of stuff bouncing back and forth, which is still fun. I love seeing different things. I don't like looking at the exact same thing over and over. This is Gremlin Shelf. I haven't seen all these Gremlins. Uh, the one in the middle. Kind of almost looks like an alien's gremlin or something. It's crazy. But uh, really cool stuff. I like seeing different stuff. Mecha gremlins, really awesome. You get into Optimus Prime's many different versions. Three different versions of Optimus Prime. All looking good in here. And you can just see each one of them. They're all positioned just a little bit different. And that really does work. Nice looking uh, use of light in there too. So they're well lit. Pretty cool. And then there's a Megatron one down the road coming up. That's that's here in a bit. Now, I love this shelf here. Now, this is obviously the prize where he's put more of his time and effort and work into the Masterpiece ones. And so this art crew here, all looking great. Every one of these figures posed really well, looking good. Got the vertical space used properly. And the background in there looks good. So everything looks really great in this. So fantastic job. Excellent job there. Uh, this is something completely different. Now this, uh, you'll see another picture of this here in a little bit. This is cool. I think it's the 112 scale, six inch animated version. And I don't know if he put the lights in himself or if they were already in this vehicle or not, but uh, Batmobile, uh, I, I'm a sucker for Batmobile, you know. Here's TMNT. This is NECA and it's, is this one street scene? Is this how big one street scene is? Because if, if so, that's a really good value for a hundred bucks. That's a, I, when I first saw it, I thought it was two side by side, but that might just be one. That looks really, really nice the way that's set up. That's a, a wonderful display piece. That's like a hundred and fifteen dollar or hundred and fifty or something dollar display. You're definitely getting your money's worth out of that. That looks fantastic, especially when you get all your figures on it. Then we've got a Devastator in here along with a. I don't want to say is it. It's not a double dealer. Anyway, uh, looks really amazing. I, I believe. This is all masterpiece looking stuff here. And then we get into kind of a few different things going on here. We got some Batmobile. Well, I think it's all Batman, all Batman stuff. Just different eras of Batman. Looking really cool. Most of it being the 112 scale 6 inch. And that yeah, looks really nice and clean. The whole shelf, all Batman. Then we've got here with okay, more masterpiece and more art crew. Looking fantastic overall. And just kind of... So you, you have one picture on one side and this picture on the other side. So that looks really good the way that was done. And I'm sure in person, like side by side, it just feels like it's just one continuous. We'll see the full picture here in a bit. We'll get the whole picture. And then there is the full picture looking pretty good. And 
And it's kind of why you zoom in on some of these shelves so you can see each one of them a little bit better. But that looks fantastic. The whole wall just taken up really well, looking great. In the center, you've got the Galactus, which it's all well lit, looking great. And it just flows. It works. It's it's a very nice looking display. And great job. Great job. I mean, I love the, the breakup between the purple on the right and the, uh, the kind of the brown that we see with the Teltran and all that kind of stuff in the arc on the left. And we get some other different stuff here. So we've got uh, a mixture of some Predator, some Spawn, some uh, Robocop. Gotta love that Robocop. And then some different eras of Turtles. So that's uh, really an interesting looking shelf. And is it one of those things? If maybe you don't have a ton of Robocop stuff. You kind of put it on a, on a catch-all kind of shelf. Here we go with uh, this. This is very interesting. Now this is where I kind of like differentiation meaning that it's not all just cubed and the same these are slightly different and the angles and the way it works and you put it all in there it looks really good the way this was done and i like these shelves so we got some gs are classified some more transformers and we kind of see some some of the close-up pictures and how it comes together in a full display and we got a little bit of gundam stuff going on here i think we got more gundam stuff coming too but yeah it looks pretty good overall and it's displayed really well spaced out really well it's not cluttered at all and makes them look pretty good then we have more of the Gundam stuff here. And then, so we've got, looks like two different TVs for, in this small space. Maybe one's for watching something and maybe one's for probably a dual setup. Yeah, I bet you this is a dual setup for your, for your computer and all that. And uh, maybe this is a workspace. This is the workspace. It just makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, yeah, I guess that is a workspace. Looks pretty cool though. And well, I, I do a dual setup. I have a 65 inch TV that I'm using right now uh, and then i've got the uh, computer monitor all connected to the computer so it's a dual setup here is um, more predator stuff probably for work probably at work so good stuff right there uh, it's kind of fun and take a break have a look at these guys and then we've got some aliens so it's predator versus alien that's a whole lot of fun just seeing that that go into town working on that that's that's really cool and yeah, good looking stuff going on. Uh, also some comics, uh, just showing some comics here. That's that's fun right there. Is that a Spider-Man number one in there? And then there's a picture. Now there's there was a couple of different pictures of this. I try to find the one that gets the whole picture in. And I think it looks great all together. Everything's posed really well. You've got, uh, is that Fans Toys Superion? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Zeta. Zeta, because Fans Toys isn't out yet. Zeta looks fantastic. I think that's actually the metallic one. Not the first run, the metallic one, which I'm a little jealous because I would rather have the metallic one. And then uh, we've got Omega Supreme in there. All this looks really good. Lots of fun right there. Then we've got this. Uh, so we got Blade going up against the Headless Horseman. Did Blade cut his head off? That That's what happened. That's the story of Ichabod Crane. And then here is that Megatron I was talking about where we have three different Megatrons in the shelf and... That looks really good. It's just uh, great to see it. I like how it's lit up, and I like how you have three different size kind of scales of Megatrons, and all of them look a little, little bit different. A little bit different stylization. Let me get into the 1986 crew, and yeah, these guys look pretty good too. All posed well. I love the background, and not to mention just all the figures look good. They're all just good looking figures in the first place, so fantastic job right there. And then here's more of this, and like we saw the big picture a little while ago, and getting into this looking good. And see, that's the thing: you get them all posed and displayed, give them enough space that you can appreciate each one. That's how you do it. it gave them the space. Now here's all of those Batmobiles pulled off that one shelf and laid out. And I probably should have clipped all these closer together so you could see like the progression of them. But uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, pretty awesome. It's an awesome time that you can get all these different Batmobiles in this scale. It's pretty awesome. And anyway, thank you, Alpha Pack. Amazing job. You just really, really stepping up the game. Not really stepping up your game. You're showing me more pictures of more of what you got going on there. So that's fantastic. Uh, moving into Angel's collection. Now, this is the animated series of these figures. And I, he does customs. So I'm not sure if both of these were his customs. I kind of think they were. And uh, great customs. I mean, you, I couldn't tell that they weren't original. Because there's so many different versions of RC and Finbots coming out now. 
kind of hard to keep up with sometimes. There's a picture of one of the custom RCs, 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 and uh, that's one of them. And then, of course, we just swap out the other color one for this picture. So great photography, lots of fun. Uh, is uh, is the actual RC a little little embarrassed? What's going on? What's going on here? And then we've got TwinCast with all of these. Uh, this is supposed to be showcasing the custom stinger that's in there, but also looking. This is a lot of the repaint stuff, so it's kind of a special stuff. Not all of them are repaints, but you can kind of see how they're not the main figure. They're the repaint, like twin cast, and of course, you got the black repaint down there of Steel Jaw. So fun stuff, and then just a little bit more showing, showcasing uh, custom work done here. Also, just impressive custom work in the background, which kind of low key flex on that background that he made himself, which is fantastic. And then getting into some more of the Finbots going on. And yeah, this is great, great looking stuff. And it's, I mean, it's a good time if you're into the Finbots. It really is. Because there's so much out there uh, with flame toys and all that's going on. Then we get down here. No, I think that's it for Angel. Angel, thanks so much for showing me. I think he just kind of shows me custom updates these days because he's shown so much in the past. But fantastic job. You have a wonderful collection and keep it up. Keep up the good work. Now we're getting into Brennan's collection, which is a great looking collection too. And we're starting out with kind of a combination of stuff. We got some Transformers up top. And we've got different things like Godzilla and things down below. Is that a Bucky's? That looks like a Bucky's. It's a gas station. Bucky's in Texas and Dallas. And probably other places in Texas too, but uh, it's 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 like a it's almost like a mall. It's such a big gas station. But uh, the electronic EV chargers are always empty there too. Uh, getting into up here this is really cool uh the this was a great space that that he had and he showed the space but i was wanting closer up pictures so he's got that for me they look fantastic just really nice very clean very neat uh what's going on with this office and this display space uh looking up here we get to see the new metroplex and all that good stuff and moving on down uh just fantastic i kind of like how he did this now looking at it i didn't really realize what he was doing at first but he's elevating each one up on a riser as kind of your eye will flow up to the top corner that is cool and it looks like they're moving up and then gonna catch up on the other shelf and then there's the other shelf that is really cool i like that and so many different figures from many different eras and that that is awesome it looks really good well spaced out well displayed and uh, looks like we got the quote-unquote KO orange version of the Fans Toys Cyclonus up there. Love that figure, by the way. It's fantastic. I love the Fans Toys version. I love the orange one. But yeah, lots of great stuff going on right here. Uh, here we go with some Detoffs. And of course, they look fantastic. Well lit. And uh, that's you know that's one of the things. This stuff looks so good when you kind of dim the lights and you, you light up the room with this. And that's focal point and your eyes go to it it looks really good i like that i like how that's done and uh, each one of them have their lights just illuminated from the top and spaced out really well use of risers and each shelf looks sort of targeted like it makes sense why the figures are on there and how they're displayed fantastic here we go with the baddies of the baddies and we've got the decepts going on right here and same same situation spaced out posed looking great and a uh, nice secret shelf going on over there all over, yeah. Fantastic job. Looking looking excellent. Just excellent. And then this kind of shows you the full view of what you're seeing right there. And then up top, putting the big bots up top. Now, this is some... Some people have given some feedback on one end and some people have given feedback on the other to try to use every square inch of that vertical space. But I think it looks cleaner to, to the way it is. Like, this looks very clean. I personally would probably boost them up, try to stick something underneath it. It would make it look junkier if I did that. But that's the way I do it, which does kind of look a little junky at the end. This looks very clean. And I think that it's elegant, and I like it. I really like how this looks. And I would say the space up there isn't wasted. It actually adds to it to make it look more elegant. And there's a close-up of that space that I am talking about. And uh, so we've got on here... Dr. Egg, and we've got uh, the, is the prosecutor, the prosecutor? No. Anyway, 
uh, some like, transwatch stuff going on there, and then really great. And with those, see, I don't think the people that uh, don't have the 21 inch combiners realize just how big they are. They are huge. Those are some big old boys because that's the fans' toys version of Skyfire, and that's a huge figure. And he just looks tiny next to him because these guys are just such big bots. Big, big bots. You know, you got some big bots. And then looking over here, this is the other side of his workspace. And um, first off, that is a really cool workspace. Uh, now, I don't have a three monitor uh, setup uh, plus a TV. That is interesting. A three monitor setup plus TV. So that's uh, fantastic right there. And then uh, looking at the Zeta Unicron on top of the computer, which the computer looks pretty cool. Lit up. That's uh, the clear acrylic case to it that's awesome and then of course all the transformers up top there looks great here is another shelf just kind of squeezing in a little uh we got a little beast wars up top and then we've got three different megatrons that is cool you got the delta in there you got the the yellow magnus magnus uh, that's some cool stuff going on in here gray looking shelf whole lot of fun and then there's it's prime time I mean, you got to have an Optimus Prime, right? I mean, what kind of a collection would you have if you didn't have at least one Optimus Prime or two Optimus Primes in different scales and uh, different colors and different... That looks fantastic. That's really cool. Just, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> to tell you the truth, it's just all the different color Optimus Primes looking really cool. All posed, all looking good, all looking like they belong. And there's another angle of it, and I just love this. I mean, it's just really clean, really neat, and I'm a little jealous because I I feel like I let mine get a little too cluttered, and uh, even with those prime shelves with a bunch of primes on it, the whole thing looks really elegant and clean. So here is more Beast Wars stuff, and I want to say it's I felt like the lights were out, but you can tell by the side of it the lights aren't out, but it, it somehow it feels like it's only being lit up by the LEDs that are in there. But it looks really good, and I've I've grown to have more of an appreciation for Beast Wars. I think that's kind of what's going on these days. A lot of people are appreciating Beast Wars a lot more, but this looks really good. Really good. And then uh, more Beast Wars on that side. And fantastic. And it looks like we got some Iron uh, Trans Art. Trans Art in there, not Iron Trans. Trans Art stuff going on there looking really good and fantastic. And you got to kind of mix it up. you got to mix up... If you're a Beast Wars collector, you can't just do Takara or one thing. you got to kind of mix them up or you're just not going to have much of a Beast Wars collection, which is what's going on here. It's all mixed up, looking good. And there's another angle of it, looking fantastic. And, of course, up top we've got the big bots, and they look elegant, all posed, working great. Fantastic. And another shot just kind of like this is this angle of it. So hopefully you get some ideas from this, and you're looking at this, you're saying... That's a great idea. I really like that idea. I like how he did that because that's what this is all about. Just kind of sharing of ideas. But uh, anyway, uh, Brandon, thank you. Brandon, thank you for such a great collection. This looks fantastic. This is this is great. So clean, so neat. You should be very proud of how you set that up. Getting into Chris's collection. So I want to show this first. This is kind of how Chris had uh, started out his collection with kind of... Uh, just some stuff on the speakers, and we're going to see a little more of that. But he's kind of branched out. Now you're going to see that he displays his stuff in a lot of different places. And he's come up with a lot of creative ways to display it. Uses of space. I mean, that's a big thing. Collectors are running out of space. So I, this is a work area. It shows, like, some figures and stuff on top of the speakers, which was all he really was showing me at first. But now, to today, we've got a whole bunch of different pictures, which look really cool how he's displayed it. And, and I've got to say... It's ingenuity at its best, and let's get into looking at all these. And uh, before we get into that, let's see what we got on the speakers here. So this is the Cyan Culture, and he's having a lot of fun with that Metroplex, which I think is a great figure. It's a good-looking figure. It, it looks the part for me, and once you get it all assembled and put together, it's a lot of fun. Uh, then we've got some of these over here on the shelf, and, and this is really just the beginning, but again, looking really good. And, yeah, fantastic little display he's got going on right here. I love the G1 Jetfire. And we, we got some Fembots along with uh, Swoop. I mean, you gotta, you gotta have Swoop. Swoop's great. And a few other figures. And they're spaced out. They're start, starting to see some of the stuff spaced out a little bit more. And then here we go with uh, up top here. 
Chris has some pictures. Now, I hope I'm still with the same Chris. And I'm not getting two Chris's mixed up, but I might have. I might have. That might be something I've done in the past, but... Anyhow, um, we're moving into this here. Interesting displays on how this stuff is being displayed. This is, looks like uh, maybe the kitchen. A little something going on in the kitchen right there. And then here we go with some other stuff going on, on top of the cabinet. So getting getting in where you fit in, where pretty much anything you've got anywhere and how you want to display it is pretty cool. It looks pretty good the way this is done. And yeah, then we're back to this. So I might be mixing two Chris's together the way I save the files. But anyhow, there's this picture right here, which shows kind of a corner and displaying all of this. This looks really good. This... Uh, it's simple, it's elegant, it's get in where you fit in. And, you know, I'm going to say that should you cover the whole thing with uh, shelf top to bottom, you know, that's not for everybody. Not everybody wants this whole space covered in shelving. Somebody wants just a little bit of what's going on in this corner, and that works. And here's an, another set of display, which looks to be the same spot, maybe just changing it up, put something different here and there. And that's another way people collect. Another way people display is to only to cycle it out. Cycle out what you've got on display. And those records, those all look like records to me. And then here we go with uh, the cabinets and the shelves. And that looks pretty cool too. And with that, it's just making use of what you have, where you have it, how you display it, which works for me. And that's, well, I mean, I kind of, it's kind of what we all do in a way is make use of our space and make it look as clean and neat and as deliberate as we can and it works and then we go with uh some other big bots on another shelf and that'll work there too looking pretty good making use of your space is really important all those figures look fantastic too and here we go lit up at night now i've seen some experimenting with some, uh, I would call this ambient lighting because it's not directly on it, it's behind it and that's illuminating from behind it, which has a very cool effect and I really like that. And I know a lot of, if you watch a lot of YouTubers that uh, vlog and stuff, they have the ambient lighting behind them to give that kind of a glow, which uh, that's pretty cool. Here's another spot we're kind of showing how it's trying to do the same thing with the lighting in that area, which works too. And that works. That looks good. It's interesting. And showing different effects is fun. Now, this is another area where we see all of these. Now, I kind of wonder, I mean, is there a triplicate of some of these figures that just kind of moved around? Like, hey, this is where I've displayed them here. This is where I've displayed them there. And just move them around. So there's a little bit of, in my opinion, a little bit of confusion about some of the pictures. But it's still kind of fun to see all the different ways to display it. Anyway, Chris, thanks so much for sharing your collection. Great job on making use of all the space that you've got and displaying them as best you can. And it's prime time. Oh, I guess I got more Chris pictures. And maybe this is a different Chris. I really have got to be better on that. So anyhow, got a few more pictures, two more. I got Optimus Prime. And it's a focus shelf of Optimus Prime. And that looks fantastic. And everyone's posed. And they're all different eras. And I think that you definitely... Uh, you definitely can appreciate each one of these. And uh, that's the big Pangu KO oversize of Magic Square in the middle. And that makes sense. It really does. It's all the focal points there. And you see all the other primes around it. And then I, I couldn't leave this out. This, I don't know anything about this Devastator. Is it a 3D print? Because it kind of looks like it might be. But it looks, the best word for that Devastator is perfect. Size, scale, perfect. Uh, color, perfect. Uh, nailing tune accuracy, perfect. If that's what it takes, I and mean, does it transform? No. Uh, would I swap it out for my Toy World? Yeah, I probably would. I probably would swap that out for Toy World. Uh, it looks good. Uh, the only thing I'd really need on it is some articulation in the hands opening. Yeah, and then I could move my Toy World out, put that one in. Great job. Great looking stuff, Chris. Now we're getting into Forrest's collection, and I've got to say that there's a lot of cool stuff that he's done here, 
and we're going to go through all this but looking at the first picture is some big big bots you know we like some big bots and up top with the Trypticon and the biggest of the biggest those it's got to be Unicron the art and down below we got a few more and then smaller figures so the legends to accentuate it to make them look so much bigger love the artwork behind it too really does work and uh, I was hearing that white shelving is hard to get these days it's uh much harder to get through Ikea, which I don't shop at Ikea, so I wouldn't know, but that's what I was hearing from Toy Sorceress who was saying that. She's redoing her room. Uh, here is a, it's a great looking display that we have going on right here. I believe this to be legend scale. I don't want to be wrong on that, but I do believe it's legend scale. And it looks great. Just the way they've got it, it looks like a progression of like uh, season one and two into movie and after movie kind of stuff. But. Yeah, looks fantastic the way that's set up. Now we're getting into this is kind of a reenactment of what we have with the judgment scene. Guilty or not guilty, which I like that too, and that looks great. And it's kind of cool because the background looks like sort of a continuation of the diorama that's going on in the middle there. And that works. And then, of course, you got to have lots of Sharktacons. I mean, it's it doesn't make sense to only have one. But it, it, it makes a lot of sense to have, what, 30? <laughs> I don't know how many are in there. I didn't count them, but looks cool. Looks great. This is a whole lot of fun. This set was a whole lot of fun, too. And is that uh, Impossible Toys in there? I think I see yeah, Impossible Toys in there. Then we've got Forrest showing his display shelf top to bottom. And looks like he put a lot of work in the very bottom one. That looks really good. They're all well lit, and that's great so you can see them well. And I actually, I think that this looks better from this angle. I mean, I appreciate the each one of these shelves even more from looking at it like this. It looks really good. And uh, lots of legend stuff going on in here. Lots of fun. Yeah, this is a really fun setup. That shelf is wide. That looks like a 30-inch shelf wide. The average shelf is only like two foot wide. This is much wider. It might even be a... Uh, 40 foot 40 inch 40 inch shelf but then again i might be off because they're legends and legends that's the thing about legends though they, they give you a little bit more space to work with here goes some g1 stuff going on and uh i think we just switched into garrett's collection so forrest thank you so much for showing your collection that is fantastic we're getting into garrett with some vintage along with the mp01 and Oh, that's cool too. I like the way that stuff looks. That's pretty interesting. And we've got got my what my favorite Dinobot swoop down there. Just can't can't get get away from that. That looks fantastic. Got some boxes in there. Uh, here we go with more G1 stuff. Very nice. It just each shelf is laid out, set up, looking good. Especially with this vintage stuff. Look at that that Jaguar up top, man. Those things. I got mine for thirty five bucks at uh, KB. But uh, I got rid of it because I just never played it. But man, that is a fun, cool little system. The box is a cool looking. System's cool looking. Anyway, uh, mixing all that stuff in, great elements, a whole lot of fun with this. And yeah, this shelf here's got more of the vintage G1. Looks like we've got some of the, is that Diamond Select of the Black Hole? I just did a Black Hole video. So it's top of mind what's going on with Black Hole right there. Uh, but a bunch of different elements mixed in here looking great uh, Here we go with the G1 up top G1 down below. I think it's all G1. I see some action master stuff going on in there So that's mixed together. So this is actually sort of mixing the years of the G1 It's not like it's going chronologically, but it's set up to meet the height requirements so that you can see them all and I like that. I think that really does kind of take precedence the ability to see them all and I don't know what that uh, Metroplex is that might be is that the Maki toys or I'm not sure the Metroplex looks a little bit different it looks uh, looks like a customer or something it's pretty cool looking and then here we go with yeah some headmaster stuff going on here uh, getting in just more G1 pretenders down below yeah it's really cool looking setup some of this stuff See, you start getting into the later years of Transformers. Some of that stuff, it it's, eludes me. I don't know everything about it, but uh, kind of fun, though. And then here we go with more of the G1, and it surprised me trying to piece together a 
Scorponok. How many parts that thing has? This Scorponok has a lot of parts. And then going down a little bit more, uh, some Insecticons. Gotta love those Insecticons. Deluxe Insecticons. We need some Deluxe Insecticons. That's... They look so cool. Because, you know, we, we've seen the regular ones so much. The Deluxe ones are, are almost like something that we crave. We need to get that. And then down below, of course, we've got uh, good old vintage Galvatron. I, it's tough to properly display a vintage Transformer collection. I think that this is a good way to do it. It really is. We go right over here and we've got the Predaking up top and then uh, some, some combiner shelf. A lot of combiners mixed in here looking good. And then I love the six shot. I would have to say six shot is, is in the top. So one of my favorite vintage figures that I had, uh, it's just, it was a lot of fun. Playability on the thing is just through the roof. And uh, this, it looks good too. Even though maybe it didn't have the articulation I would have liked, but it still looks pretty cool. Then here's the setup. Let's show the whole picture here. Get it all, all in picture, all in frame. Garrett, thanks so much. What a great looking collection. Very good job putting that together. Now we're getting into Gibbs pictures. Gibb is not showing his whole collection. He's showing some new stuff that he's got, and then maybe a couple of how some of the displays have changed. So we're not seeing it all. But this is a little bit of fun with the Trypticon and Metroplex and the Cyan Culture. I think a lot of people are having a lot of fun with that Cyan Culture Metroplex. Even though it's not as big as, say, everyone else would have said it should have been, it kept the price point at a decent price point for a third party and does a lot of cool stuff. Then getting into Masterpiece, uh, just Gib does a really great job with his displays. It looks very clean. It's well lit. And, and really his pictures. I mean, he's, he does a great job of capturing the clarity in the pictures and how he takes his pictures. It's really good. Really good. And then uh, here we go. I say that and then this is super bright right here. Uh, I, I struggle also when it's lighter colored figures like the, uh, the Fans Toys repaint of the Sovereign that's to the toy colors. I mean, it's really hard with these light colors, all that reflectiveness with all the light, but... Looks good. Looks really good. And and this is cool here. Uh, it starts to show some of the ambient lighting that he's got going on with it. And uh, that is great. I mean, how many sweeps does he have? <laughs> he's upgraded from... Well, I say upgraded. He's added two. Because I don't think he's getting rid of any of his old sweeps. He's keeping the old ones. x transbots as he goes into the fans' toys. And then here we go with a mix of some... Legends and... Is this all Legends? I think this is all Legends. Never mind. It's all Legends. Looks great. Looks great. Nice looking display of Legends right here. And then showing a little bit more of what's going on with the uh, Season 3 movie and Season 3 cast and mixing in some new members. Here's some alt mode stuff. So it's just kind of showing off like I'm just going to transform this. Or I think he keeps these in alt mode. Possibly. Might possibly. And that's another thing about having a triple changer, uh, having one from each company and then having picking your favorite mode and keeping it in it. That's the way to do it. Looks like we're uh, starting to get closer on a combiner for a Defensor, but cool looking stuff. And then we have good old Death Saurus. Death Saurus. Uh, that looks good. Sit on throne. I believe that's the HasLab one. And yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it. And. I've uh, I've heard third-hand negative stuff, but I've never heard anyone directly saying that they didn't like theirs. Everyone that's got it says they like it. So um, I like this setup right here, and of course having the Takara one on the stand, flying along, looking cool. That looks great. And then just gotta have the Titan, Titan of Skabanak, Skabanak. Yeah, that looks really good. Looks really good. Mixing in some legends to make Scorponok look that much bigger and that's that optical illusion stuff here's more alt mode and alt mode flexing going on right here that's a lot of fun um let's see how long was that it's th two hours and 15 minutes of transforming and another hour and eight no oh, there's the shared in there okay two and a half hours no just kidding uh cool stuff the this picture is interesting because it shows repaints of main characters. It's not all just main characters, so that is pretty cool. The way they did that, I like that. Uh, good job, good job on this. 
Showed a little bit of Masters Universe Motherboard. That just came out. I need to rewatch that again. That was really good. That really the Netflix. That was pretty good. And showing some Junkion stuff. And that's a lot of Junkions. And that looks great. I think he's gotten every single one. And why? Why would you get every single one to do this? That looks great. It really reenacts the Junkion planet. And yeah, so cool. So cool. And what is this? KFC? Almost all KFC? So great job, Gib. Wonderful, wonderful collection. But your updates are really outstanding. Now getting into Happy Accident. And this is some really cool stuff going on right here. And um, he does some great photography with... Uh, got good old Godzilla. That movie... I mean, people are just raving about that movie. I haven't seen it, but uh, people rave about that movie. Here we go with a nice Dinobot picture here all the effects he adds in the overlays and of course picking the backgrounds and setting it all up i mean it's a lot of time and effort for the photography but it, it pays off at the end it really works out well here's another one of a metallic godzilla don't know much about metallic godzilla i really don't know a lot about godzilla but i can i can pick one out when i see it man then we have swoop gonna take them on so I, I, my money's on swoop swoop's gonna win He's not the smartest, he's not the strongest, he's not the biggest or the fastest. But well, he might be the fastest. Then we get into the next set of collections. So thank you so much, Happy Accent, for all of those great pictures and photography that you share. Looking pretty good. And yeah, you have a great collection. You showed us in the last one if you want to go check that out in the 18K subspecial. So getting into Mark's collection, I think I only got one picture. And that's why I did something wrong. Only got one picture. But it's a great looking picture. And so we'll talk a bit about this. So a couple things I'm seeing here. Number one, really good backgrounds. And I think that when you're setting up your display, and if you put in some backgrounds, put the work in before you put the figures in, that it's going to pay off. And that is fantastic. Kind of planning out how you're going to display them. So in the very middle on the left, you see the Insecticons, you see Astro Train, you see all, all, all the other bad guys. And that looks really good. Planning that extra shelf on there so it'll all fit works really well you got dinobots at the top you can see them all and then uh and then the sh they're not all cookie cutter same size like each shelf is set up to fit it right so you don't waste any space so there's no vertical space wasted inside any of these but there's enough there to make it feel elegant which is kind of what we're seeing a lot of today a lot of really well placed and well set up well spaced out and then of course they're posed in different poses in each one and all looking like there's some something deliberate going on right there love how they mounted he mounted the airplanes on the side they're flying by doing a flyby there that works too so fantastic job this looks great good job mark now we're going to get into michael's collection and that looks pretty cool so we've got in here some uh, is this all nightwing stuff i think it is and did I get the name right? Looks pretty cool. All different versions. Now we're moving on into this focused jazz collection, which looks really interesting. And I didn't know they made this many different versions of jazz, but that is so cool. And you get your favorite character. And you want to go deep and you want to get all the different versions that you can. See a G2 in there. There's a lot of cool stuff. What a great way to do it. Very, very interesting. Then we get into all kinds of different stuff in this corner over here so we are seeing flash a lot of flash and i know it's flash because it says it up top but really a, an interesting corner going on over here with all of the different stuff i wouldn't even begin to tell you what it all was in regards to flash other than the fact they're flash but not uh it's not flash gordon here we go some dc stuff and Looks like a lot of modern takes on superpowers mixed into this, which I know about because that's I chased that down. But then there's this other stuff with Batman and just uh, looking through it, I think I see a bit, quite a bit of is some of this McFarlane and some of this is Mattel. Am I right? But or is it mostly just all Mattel? It still looks really good, really cool stuff in there, and so many different figures. And I think this dates back to different eras, too. So pretty cool stuff. At the top, we've got a Skylinks, and we've got some more bigger Batman and 
stuff going on at the top right there. Pretty cool, interesting collection and stuff going there. Uh, we've got some different types of memorabilia. This is a big old mixture of stuff in here. Uh, Fallout, yeah, from the game. That's interesting. Different stuff going. On. I like seeing stuff that's different. Almost looks like a Coca-Cola kind of, but I don't. I know it's probably not. But what is that? That is cool. Just it's interesting. It's something different. Hey, I like seeing stuff I don't see every single day. And that's that's one of the things that like you start seeing almost the same reoccurring things all the time. I want to see something different. Here it is with uh, some. Was that Combiner Wars Devastator up there? So we got some Combiner Wars, uh, some mainline figures here. Look, uh, looks like they've got the Commander class. Magnus, Magnus, and then different versions of Millennium Falcon, Lego Millennium Falcon, maybe. Yeah, and so that's some interesting stuff there too, and a lot low Star Wars show going on in the middle of all this. And then here we go, we get to see a little bit more of the Transformers straight up in the front, and uh, yeah, all the Transformers right there, and then displayed so that you can see each figure and character, and yeah, looks pretty cool. I see some different Magnuses at the bottom too. So kind of a progression magnus from the bottom to the middle um, on up top some dinobots yes definitely got them uh hasbro did a great job of these dinobots really good stuff and here we go with uh, this looks like one six scale stuff like uh meaning 12 inch and uh i am always curious how people display that stuff because it's so big and i mean i know masterpiece stuff's big but masterpiece is nine inch these are 12 inch so that's pretty interesting to see how this stuff's display looks pretty cool looks like a good way to do it so anyway thank you michael what a great looking collection and so much cool stuff you have going on there i see progression from many different areas so really awesome but uh anyway let me know what you guys think about these displays and did you get any ideas and of course like and subscribe and go put your pictures in for the 20,000 subscriber special again thanks everybody and hadarium hanger out